cordless Makita drill, moderate use, like new. It's from a smoke free household. Included uh, batteries, charger, holster, no warranty, no refunds, cash only. Welcome back to the shrine where things are being dissected and given new life every once in a while. Most of the time just being dissected on the altar today is this uh, Makita drill I uh, picked up from a friend and uh, he describes it as a slightly used item and it has a particular problem. We're gonna go and investigate. So in the box got a holster and uh, there's a battery 10.8 volt 14 watt hour battery. You got a charger it's a DC 10WB Makita charger and then we have the drill itself looks like another battery is installed um, out of the box it it has a funky smell not sure if it's charged. Oh, look at that. It's charged. Oh, there you go. Can you see the smoke? Smoke is coming out of the body. Okay, I will stop. It's just too much smoke. Yeah, you can see the smoke coming out. So, indeed, it's a native speaker. It communicates with smoke signals. Um, doesn't look like it's a brushless motor. It says Makita FD02 10.8 volt 12 volt max 3.8 or 10 millimeter chuck. Warning to reduce risk of injury. User must read instructions. <laughs> sure. Made in China. So here's the battery, uh, it's got two prongs here, you can pull it out. Caution, attention, precaution, 12 volt max lithium ion, rechargeable lithium ion battery. Battery is warm to the touch. What was that? I only use it for uh, 10 seconds maybe, 14 watt hour. Looks like it's got three of those 18650 cells. So those are 3.7 volts each. So that would be, yeah, menthol arithmetics 7.4 plus 3, 10.4 plus 0.7, 11.1. .1. .1. So this one says 10.8 volts. I guess that's the nominal. I didn't measure the voltage on it. That made me curious. Let's fire up the voltage measuring machine. Look at that, it's got marking, so that's negative. This is positive. Of course, the dangle doesn't go in. Do not ever short circuit these batteries. We are going in, so that's positive. It's negative, so 10.5 volts. Looks like it's slightly discharged. Let's look at the other one. 10.4 volts. Okay, so they both they both are nominal. I didn't charge these. Um, so 10.8 volts, slightly off of the nominal. Not sure how much use it got. Let's get the trusty rigid and we should be in in no time
how many tools you need to disassemble a drill, right? So, in a clamshell, describe a drill. Well, there's the business end. So there are two clips here. You can see there's one clip and there's the other one. There goes one. Here's the other one. I've seen that before. <laughs> okay. And we are in. Okay. So what we got here is a clip. I think it goes to one of these buttons. Maybe it's better to take the other side. Let's try that. No. Okay. Okay, there you go. So, uh, PA6 glass fiber 30 plastic. I'm not sure. I never really understood when, when someone is doing this, you know, tear down video. What's the point of cycling one side of the component? You know, this, this part never works by itself. The strength of the body comes from the fact that these two are bolted together. So exercising it and bending, I'm, I'm not sure that gives us any information. You know, when this is all assembled, the bolts increase the stiffness considerably. So it's not only the plastic, but the internal structure will stiffen up the clamshell and then the bolts will make it even better, you know. It just increases, every, every part increases the overall stiffness. So let's see what we got here. Um, there is a uh, selector switch here. So this one just toggles this little switch right there. So it goes left and right. You know, obviously that's the on-off switch. Inside there, most likely, is a potentiometer so the more you depress it, the higher the speed is going to be. Um, so here's the uh, battery and you see it has only two contacts. So most of the times we have a third one for voltage sense and uh, other stuff. Um, so the manufacturers are trying to prevent um, you know, you using um, non-approved batteries so uh, the controller and the batteries talk to each other. This seems to be an older model. I'm, I'm guessing it's probably five, ten years old. Uh, again, it's a FD02. And then here's the uh, FBI tracker. Nicely, neatly built in. Okay, you've seen that before. This is on. This is in every uh, every tool that you purchase. That's how they prevent. Um, you know, stealing from the store. Um, so this is the uh, motor side. That's where the uh, smoke was coming out of. So this seems to be just a simple brushed uh, motor. So this is the motor here and then this is the gearbox. And obviously this is the business end, that's where you put the drill or whatever you are using. So here's the speed selector, so you have the fast and the slow motion. So what it does inside, there's a selector lever, and that lever basically is going to engage two uh, different planetary gears or two different sets, or maybe you can call it one planetary gear set that is um, that is coupled. So most of the time, okay, more springs. One of my boss uh, bosses in the past said if something has a lot of springs it's not good. <laughs> well, this one definitely has a lot of springs. 
and there's springs everywhere. I'm pretty sure that it's uh, it's fun. It will be fun to assemble this if I ever assemble it. So let's look at this motor. So this is just a standard brushed motor. You can see on this end there is a uh, sintered bearing. So obviously we don't see brushes like a lot of power tools. You have the brushes sticking out of the side. You have access panels on it and then you can replace the brushes. Well, not on this one. Um, so there's a uh, spur gear here. That's what engages the planetary gear set. And then you can see that the motor has a steel body here and then there's an additional piece of steel welded or press fit on it. So what this does, this improves um, basically the flux linkage inside the motor. So, you know, there's a flux traveling in this thin sheet metal. So the, the flux inside the motor is traveling like in a circle. And then what this thing does, this extra steel, it basically stiffens it up. You know, it makes this back iron stiffer. And what you can see here that it's only in the motor section where we have the permanent magnets inside. So how do I know permanent magnets? You can see that the, the screwdriver is sticking to it. So right there. So there's one of the magnets. Uh, probably 90 degrees apart is another magnet. The part number on the motor is made in China. QD04-1902. CCW 15 volt. So it's a 15 volt motor. Um, the battery is only rated at uh, again 10 and a half volts. So something interesting here. Okay, you, you you've, you've taken this apart. You have the intention to put it back together. So notice that uh, that's the red wire here, and there's a red marking. Okay, and there's a black wire, and there's no marking. So what I'm going to do is just pop these off. We're going to go inside the motor and investigate what is it that is smoking inside this motor. Okay, so uh, you can see that uh, the part is basically bolted to this plastic, to this intermediate plastic piece. So I can take these bolts off. It's not going to do us any good because um, that's not how the motor is disassembled. So the motor is disassembled from this end. So you can see these crimpings here. You can see that there's a plurality of crimpings. So there's eight pieces around the perimeter. So once we uncrimp those, we'll be able to pull this off and then go inside and look at the motor, figure out what is it that's smoking. This motor is designed not to be tinkered with. Uh, you can see that this is built um, on a cost level. Basically, you know, they, they don't put material where there is no material needed. Um, everything is about manufacturability. So we got stamped parts here. We got press fit components everywhere. We have the thinnest gauge connectors that's possible to make. Um, you can see a lot about cooling. So there's a radial fan inside that churns the air, creates a low pressure zone here. It's sucking air through these uh, ports, cooling the brushes. Typically in the DC motors, the brushes are the hottest components. And then expelling the hot air through these ports here and you can see that those ports are in line with these openings inside the motor. There you go. The cover is off. So there's dust in it. You can see the brush dust. So this is all brush dust collecting in the back. Again you can see this is just a stem steel part. I'd say it's about 1.5 2 millimeters thick and then there's the bearing that is a sintered 
bronze bearing so it's porous it's porous inside it's like a sponge and then what they do is they put it in a vacuum chamber with a lot of oil and so anywhere inside the bearing where there's entrapped air it's gonna soak in that oil and the oil is gonna fill it up so this is a, a one-time use basically so it's not designed to be replaced these bearings are single use here you can see the brushes you can see there's tons of brush life remained there's the brush spring so the brush spring has a lot of tension which is a good thing you can see this is just a, a simple uh, some kind of copper alloy I'm not gonna say it's bronze or um, brass I wanted to say Latun, but that's the Russian name and Chagres is the Hungarian name so the brush holder comes out so there's an extra spacer here that's preventing it okay there's a little spacer so then the brush holder comes out and what you can see is that this is uh, this is probably brass some thin brass and the brush holder itself has a different sheen it looks like copper so so these parts here there's a lot of physics in these parts people don't realize how complex of a system just just this spring so we got current flowing through this part which is gonna heat it up we also have current flowing through the brushes and then when the brush commutates with the commutator here as the commutator spins there's like sparks and all that stuff and that also heats up we, get, we basically have plasma here there's plasma so everything is heating this piece up and as this piece heats up the stiffness goes down but it still has to act as a spring if if this doesn't act like a spring then the brush doesn't have enough pressure against the commutator so the current goes up so you got even more current that heats it even more so we got basically structural uh, analysis we got thermal analysis we have fluid dynamics analysis it's cooling it um, it's a pretty complex part and making it durable and cheap is not an easy task so what we got here looks like some kind of fan attached to the rotor of course the rotor is not coming out because the gear is attached to it so I'm gonna go and uh, press it off this multi-step process involved about five tools and an arbor press but nonetheless I uh, managed to pull it off first I tried to press it but you can see this thin sheet this thin steel just buckled in uh, anyways there's a gear uh, if I get a new motor I can put the gear on it if I get the same part number it will come with a gear so let's uh, let's pull this shaft out well, by the way that's typically not a way you handle a shaft here you're not supposed to hold it I know this is hardened and polished but uh, looks like this motor got to the end of life and got a permanent magnet motor so you can see the magnets inside here and there's two arcuates that's the official name for these magnets one of the corner is chipped that's most likely during the manufacturing sometimes they glue these in sometimes they don't and you can see that inside the housing here there's a cold drown or deep drown pocket that spaces the magnets relative to each other they also space the commutator relative to that so what you can see here is that the commutator has these uh, plastic pieces and you can see there's a narrow a wide there's a little bit here 
so they they all have their spaces their places so there's just one way you can assemble this okay so that that that's the only way basically that you can assemble this either this way or that way so that makes it foolproof but as uh, smarter than me people said before you know if you make something foolproof the universe just makes a better fool so here is the uh, armature and on the armature while it's still warm you can see some beefy wire thick wire I don't see any particular overheating on the copper there's no overheating on the copper so this is just a, a balancing epoxy so they balance these rotors or armatures so it wouldn't shake your hand when it's going high speed but I don't see any issues with it what I see here on the commutator you can see there are these black marks here okay there's some soot there's some soot on it so maybe I just go and polish this up put it back together see how it works nice little beefy uh, plastic fan joined uh, to the lamination so you can see the thin steel lamination here you can basically count it one by one again there's no uh, overheating whatsoever nothing special just some 500 grit sandpaper you can see she's nice and shiny now it's uh, it's not the roundest commutator obviously there's a mica here this is called mica so that's where the two bars touch or well there's actually an insulator in between and you can see that it's uh, it's missing some copper so we're gonna do a resistance check because why not so again there's three commutator bars so the first one is 0.2 ohms second one is 0.2 ohms and you're not gonna believe but the third one is 0.2 ohms so uh, the armature looks to be good should we give it a try? I didn't crimp it. Hopefully it will not fall apart. Where's the battery? Oh, there you go. So I need to make sure I maintain polarity. And I have no idea how polarity is maintained. I'm gonna pull that out. Okay. okay, so most likely the red is the positive. Fingers crossed. So. No smoke. No smoke. No smoke. Can't see smoke. Huh. Well, that was an interesting uh, fair mode. All I did basically is just uh, send it the commutator and I got rid of the smoke. Strange. It is really, really strange. These are the things that I never believe, you know. Next thing you put it back together and it smokes again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and crimp the housing 
and then set it up here and uh, just go and run it for until the battery dies. Here's the crimping. So what I did, I just clamped it in a vise slightly and then I just use a punch. Just added punch marks here and then bent back these tabs and then I sanded it a little bit because she's a little uh, rough at the edges. Goes in a vise. So let's hook this up again. Red is to the red, black is to the black. I was going to slightly clamp it so I don't want to compress it. There you go. Hook up the battery. Positive on the battery terminal goes to the red one. It worked before. And you can touch these, that's only 10 volts. So I need to figure out how do I compress this. So let's try that method. Let it rip, baby. Let it rip. There you go. Just add one minute to it. Well, voltage is uh, probably dropping. Now you can hear the pitch changed. So right there on the motor, we have about 5.4 volts and it's dropping. I can even put it here, you guys can see it. Sorry about the glare. So you can see voltage is dropping. I'm wondering if there is a internal confuser that measures the voltage and then will disable the motor. You can see uh, 3 volts, 3.9 volts. We'll try the new battery too. Three volts. If there is some kind of device inside that catches it, we'll see that. If there's like a cutoff voltage. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stop it. There you go. Motor is not hot, battery is not hot, and it ran about four minutes. So I'm going to stop that, plug in the second battery. Nothing is hot. You know, this heat sink here, that's a big heat sink on the switch. Even that is not hot. So positive goes to the red. There you go. So I'm going to start this up. Okay, and we're going to go. While the test is going, you can check out my useless box. I built that uh, a while ago. Works every time. Batteries are probably five years old, it still works. It looks like there's a knee point, about five volts in the battery. And you can see it just died. There you go. So that was four minutes. So in four minutes, it chewed up the battery. We'd constant usage so I don't have high hopes for this thing you know if you can it you only use it for four minutes and you need to load a new battery I'm not sure if that is up to today's standards so the motor is cool you know this side is cool here it's it's not even warm to touch the battery is cool and then the controller is cool. So I'm gonna go and put it back together. There you go. 
put one of the batteries on a charger. Not sure if it's charged any. Okay. It's working. No smoke. Just pure joy. I don't know. It's got a it's got a different uh, different feel than the traditional ones, you know, when you have the big beefy battery on it. I don't know what it's good for. Um, I'll just put it in a corner and uh, maybe use it every once in a while and give it to my son. He's old enough to have one. Don't tell him about this video. Um, thanks for stopping by. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I enjoyed fixing it. I, I actually really do enjoy this was I'm, I'm not sure really what was the problem all I did is just um, send it up the commutator it looked dirty maybe some kind of material got in fluid that dried out and screwed up the brushes uh, we'll see I will uh, I will test it and time will tell so thanks for stopping by Hope you liked it and uh, come back next time. Give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and all the good stuff. See you next time. Bye.